Well, hello, good afternoon, and welcome everybody to the Sahel International Circuit here in Qatar as we get ready for the start of another new era of qualifying in the World Endurance Championship. It puts pressure on the drivers to make sure you can get a good run through that first open qualifying for the uh, for, for the class you're in, and then only that top ten goes through to effectively a shootout later on. First time we've seen United Autosports running McLaren GT cars anywhere. So there's all sorts of new combinations they're going to have to learn. Now, a new bit of livery as well, a new bit of graphic as well. I haven't seen this before. Drivers at risk. So in the drop zone, and there you go. He's just dropped out the 777 D station car. Now, that is being driven by Clement Mathieu. And again, some of the liveries, some of the names you'll recognize remain. So D station is not now a Ford or a Porsche or a Lamborghini or something. D station is remarkably still an Aston Martin. So that's not a pound in the jar. And the other Aston Martin is also a familiar uh, uh, color. Best first sector, purple means quicker than anybody else in sector two. However, behind him, the white Porsche with the yellow highlights, the pure racing car, uh, that is going quicker in both sectors. But again, look at the tiny margin, 68 thousandths, 88 thousandths. I mean, we are talking tiny margins as D-Station go from being out to top. Well, what about this man? Yes, uh, Shaheen. He's on the on he's track to find up. a full second. Now he's moved up to 12th. And he's, he's on a quicker lap again, mm -hmm. Yasser Shaheen, so he's finding exactly as Anthony said. Ian James flying out there for now, at least through the first sector, fastest of all. Just waiting to see what he can do in the middle sector. He's gone. A personal Four best. seconds. Personal so best for James in the, uh, in the heart of racing car in the middle sector as Jose Maria Lopez watches on. Why is he watching on this session? Because he is now a Lexus GT3 driver. So he's having a whole new third different career after World Tour. Amad Al Harty on a pole lap for Team WRT in the 46 car that he shares with Maxime Martin and Valentino Rossi. Ian James to the top. James the top of the pile. He is done. Alexander Malik in second. Clermont Mathieu third is Tom Van Rompuy in the pit lane. So who's got a lap? Potentially Thomas Floor doesn't look like it's going to be a huge improvement. Anybody outside? Here we go. Exits the final corner. What have you got? The WRT is it enough? W. It is enough. Yes, it is. Gone from hero to zero. They're in the... And that is a, a great job for WRT's BMW crew. So Hiroshi Kazumi is through. We've still not seen the Monte Yamaha of Yasha Shaheen. What's well, it going to be this time around? Seven cents back is Sara Bovi, seventh quickest. Not enough. Not enough. So it went away. So it went from 0.6 back, 0.6 back, 1.3 back. Yeah. The tyres went away dramatically. about 10 uh, track limits, uh, turn 15 mostly, 14, 13, 12, turn 2. As the cars go out, the identification of the driver in the car will become clear. At the moment on our timing screen, it just has the first driver. The GTs all on the good years. We look back at Jensen Button, makes uh, his return to the World Endurance Championship, but this will be his first ever season, season-long campaign in the WEC. And making it clear that that's not a single season deal either. So Jensen is looking to the longer term with Hypercar. Turbo Express, that's the 99 Proton car, so that's a Proton Porsche. And I wondered if this was going to happen, guys, because I, I did suspect with the, the field being the biggest we've ever seen, yeah. the 19 cars out there in hypercar, they have to give themselves a bit of space these days. It's 1.39, wow. 7.57, okay. Matt Campbell so he... on the back of a Daytona 24 hours win yep. and on the back of a win at the Bathurst 12 hours with Nick DeVries going through second. Yeah, second. Unfortunately, Toyota's uh, team boss suggesting that it was highly unlikely they'd even managed to get a point here. So yep. uh, that's that's obviously a, a fluctuation in performance yeah, yeah. that they weren't expecting. It'll be, it'll be fine. They'll yeah. be back to that form. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 o
That's in uh, turn 12, isn't it? Like I said, on the track guide, the first high-speed apex of that triple right-hander. Yeah. And that the rear really let go there. <laughs> Ferrari is not in yet, so they are under pressure, and, it, and it's them or the caddy that's right behind, and the caddy is right on the bubble, and the Ferrari needs to find two, three tenths. Second section, is it going to be enough? Giovinazzi is into the hyperpole. For how long? He's seventh <laughs> quickest here, but look at the gaps behind, it's tiny, and now on the bubble, the it's Brendan Hartley. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately for Cadillac fans out there, that was a good lap from Alex Lynn. So Nico Lapierre in the 36 Alpine. Not quite enough. Not enough. Just sits behind the air, of course. Uh, Alex Ferrari. Lynn's on a quick lap here. Schilder van der Linde was on a, clip, a quick lap, but he's not improved enough. Yeah, you Ferrari fade. pulls into the pit lane yeah, and leaves the track me. open for Alex Lynn. He's got a free run to the checkered flag. Yeah. And he, uh, boom, he's in in seventh. The number yep. eight Toyota is out and parked. 38 now of Jensen Button. He's in that. danger. Make it through to Hyperpole with at least one car. Ten minutes of pressure to come here for these bronze drivers, some of whom are absolute rookies to the World Endurance Championship. This is a big, big day for them. This is now going to be all about ultimate speed for these ten drivers and these ten cars. Aston Martin, BMW, Ferrari, McLaren, Corvette, Lamborghini and Porsche are all represented in this session. Now there's a driver lineup change in the Iron Dames in the World Endurance Championship. Rahul Fry has become part of their project management group for WEC has and their development. But she's also stepped away from the driving seat here. And Dorian Pan is the third member of that car. Rahul will race in ELMS. Sarah goes to the top of the time is 155.721. What about in James? He does go top. Mm -hmm. Four tenths clear. 155.320. Ahead of James Cottingham with a great lap there for the McLaren driver of United Autosports in the 59. That car numbered, of course. Van Rompuy, uh, Von Von Poy, Corvette goes top. You know, we saw James Cottingham, uh, who was fastest in that first session. So it's it, it, it's not about age. It's it's about your ability behind the wheel, what you've done, where you are perceived to be in, in the hierarchy. Eight tenths clear now of Thomas Fleur with a minute and a half to go. Tom Von Rompuy, who saw that coming? Well, the 81 from TF Sport. Ahmed no. Alharty will be disappointed with this qualifying session, yeah. no doubt about it. Yeah, we, I think we all expected a bit more from him, I think he did as well. But he's done a good job anyway, just to be inside this top ten, that's the good thing. That's a really impressive debut. A qualifying system he's never used before, in a car he's never driven before. And it's a I'm great lineup. Really impressed. Really Rui Andrade. Tom Van Rompuy has taken pole position for Corvette. It's Corvette and Porsche, one, two, then Ferrari and Aston Martin, Aston and Lamborghini in sixth place. The two McLarens would be row four of the grid, ahead of the number 46 BMW. We need to do out warm warm push. Otherwise, we have only we have only two push laps. So yeah, I think even if it's a longer race, getting your car into a high enough position on the grid to a certain degree will pay off in the race. You don't want to be stuck behind unnecessarily low down the order and putting yourself under too much pressure on race day. This is the final 10 minutes of turbo era qualifying. Last man across the line gets pole, and it's how you back time that. So you've got Matt Campbell, sorry Graham, Matt Campbell, two fastest sectors of all through the first and second sector as we ride on board with him now. Nick de Vries going quicker in sector two in the number seven Toyota, so he is closing in on that as well. We're running a clock on Kevin Est. But watch the black car in the distance, that's Nick de Vries. He grabbed that 
fastest middle sector from Campbell. And Estra went back on top and De Vries goes back on top. Wow. It is last man across the line yeah, is the so pole man. Is. They've got one more hot lap. Quicker than all of them at the moment. It is a 139.685, two thousandths for a second ahead. You said it would come down to thousands. Wipe the floor with the Toyota by a whole two <laughs> thousandths. It could have been one. He just gave himself more margin necessary. Great lap from Callum Island. But this is brilliant riding on board with Nick De Vries. But Matt Campbell, Campbell he is, is not well one up, of those. Well up, fastest in both first and second sectors. Surely this is going to see him on top. Yes, it does. Yeah. He topples Callum Eilert's. It's just a tenth and a half faster. Nick De Vries behind. He's on a personal best too. And he goes on top. <laughs> Amazing stuff between these two brilliant drivers. But others are involved as well, of yeah. course. Callum Eilert. Behind these two on track, he's set two personal bests. On a better lap, but not a pers no, yeah, not a purple lap. That final run down to the, the start finish straight. What's it going to be as he crosses the line? It is pole position for now. If there's anyone else behind him on track, De Vries is coming through, Calum but he's Eilert's, not on a best lap. Callum Eilert's got another quick lap going. Kevin Eshton potentially, but I don't think it's going to amount to much. The, the de facto benchmark in uh, WEC hypercar, and they weren't expecting the first hyperpole of the FIA WEC. And that's what it means to the man. Look yep. at that. Well, and that was a, a brilliant job. Yeah, thank you. I mean, uh, fantastic to get our first uh, ever overall pole position in WEC for our 963. Um, we've really had a strong performance all weekend and, uh, you know, made some really good uh, tuning towards qualifying and it's really paid off. So, um, yeah, starting from pole position, really important here at Qatar for the track position and, uh, yeah, looking forward to tomorrow.